Hi everybody, my name is Max Derrett. To my immediate left, that's Allison Tiemann. Let's just jump right into this story. At least four people have been injured by gunfire at YouTube's headquarters in San Bruno, California. The San Bruno Police Headquarters received multiple 911 calls about a shooting at roughly 12.48 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Tuesday, April the 3rd. Spokesman Brent Andrew for the Zuckerberg San Francisco General Hospital described three of the four injured. One is a 36-year-old man who is in critical condition. Another is a 32-year-old woman who is in serious condition. And finally, there is a 27-year-old woman who is in fair condition. The shooter is named Nazim Agdam, a 39-year-old Iranian woman. Law enforcement say that her motive to carry out the shooting may have had to do with the fact that her YouTube videos were consistently demonetized. Agdam did videos that focused on animal rights and veganism, with musical parodies mixed in from time to time, and she also did workout videos. Roughly a decade ago, she also took part in a PETA demonstration at the Marine Corps Base Camp Pendleton in California. California to protest the killing of pigs during a military exercise. In recent years, however, she apparently dropped out of the organization. The woman died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound shortly after she began shooting. Her social media accounts give us more insight into her vendetta against YouTube. Her Facebook page shows a photo of her from February 2017 standing on a street corner holding a sign that said, YouTube Dictatorship, Hidden Policy, Promote Stupidity Discrimination, Suppression of Truth. She also wrote the following on her page. YouTube filtered my channels to keep them from getting views. There is no free speech in real world, and you will be suppressed for telling the truth that is not supported by the system. Videos of targeted users are filtered and merely relegated so that people can hardly see their videos. In one Instagram video, Agdam appears in a black hood and asks her audience the following. When it comes to freedom of speech, do you think that Iran is better than the USA, or USA is better than Iran? Agdam's family told NBC News that she was a longtime YouTube user who felt she had been cheated. Agdam's brother said he called the police prior to the shooting, worried she might do something. These concerns started on the 31st of March when her family reported her missing. She was located before the shooting, but wasn't arrested due to the lack of any signs that she might carry out this particular atrocity. Allison. Well, first of all, I want to send my condolences to everybody who's been affected by this tragedy, including the the, Absolutely. the incident, the people who were shot, who are, I believe, still in hospital. I haven't heard any additional information about that. Yeah. The And also the people at the YouTube headquarters. It's a horrible thing to have happen to you, to have that sense of safety in your environment taken away. And it's probably going to be a while before they recover from that. So with that out of the way... I'm hesitant to politicize this in any kind of way. I noticed that the a lot of people on different with different political viewpoints are attempting to make their point using this tragedy and I'm not particularly inclined to add to that. Uh, although I will note that they are doing it. For example, it seems like the media has almost memory hold this, perhaps because the individual who did end up shooting YouTube, there's the suspect is a woman. And it's something mm -hmm. that I've noticed about the media in the past. For example, we've talked in the past on Breaking Badger about Christina, Christina Garcia. Garcia. She was the one of the founders of Me Too, who was alleged to have sexually assaulted and sexually propositioned staff, including two men with very similar stories. The media has gone completely silent on that story. I have not been able to find anything further on it. And this is something I've seen with the media when it comes to perpetrators that don't fit the mold of what they think a perpetrator should be. So we're talking about women who perpetrate violence. In some cases, they'll also seem to omit to mention if, if it's minorities perpetrating violence because it doesn't, doesn't fit the narrative necessarily uh, or the narrative that they want to spin. And they seem to focus on a particular group, in this case, white men. Now, that's not to say that uh, that would be the liberal me media that tends to do that and tends to not memory hole it when it's a white man, man who's doing something that's violent or aggressive. Now, in terms of more right-leaning media, they, of course, seem to focus more on violence done by immigrants and also men who are minority groups. And, mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's something that's just something that I've noticed. And so they each have their particular group that they prefer to focus on when they engage in violent behavior. 
Yeah, there's a couple of people that are trying to harp on the fact that she's Iranian, but the fact that she's Iranian doesn't seem to really have anything to do with this. She just happens to be Iranian. Yeah, it seems to be that her motive, at least just looking at this at right now, appears to have been animosity towards YouTube censorship, which is actually mm-hmm. chilling in and of itself because I've spoken out against what I perceive to be censorship of controversial issues on YouTube. And, uh, I mean, I would never want anyone to do something like this. It's, uh, no. it's something that I, you know, it's horrifying. And certainly speaking out against YouTube censorship isn't equivalent to ad- advocating anything like this. And if you are somebody yeah, I, considering doing something like this, please get mental help, mental health help before you, you go forward with it. And hopefully that you're, you're in your, if, if, you're in that kind of situation of I can't imagine the kind of desperation that would lead someone to take a gun to a public place and start shooting but please get help hey look I I understand YouTube can be quite soul-sucking from time to time especially for us artists out there and people that are actually trying to do advocacy but the last thing that you should be doing the last thing that should be on anybody's mind is a way of trying to put forward a particular message or a particular agenda is going and shooting innocent people like this woman did and thankfully, in the end, nobody, well, at the moment, it seems like nobody's going to die as a result of her shooting and that she was the only one that was a fatality in this particular event. But yeah, obviously, Allison, just to echo your sentiments, please, if any of you think about doing something like this, please get help. Obviously, in, in respect to what this woman did here, she was very mentally unwell. If you happen to see any of the clips from uh, the YouTube videos that have been taken down, but you know, there are people that are mirroring them everywhere. She was clearly mentally unwell. And just because this whole animosity towards YouTube because of the demonetization thing seems to be the primary thing, there's obviously a whole bunch of other factors that factor into somebody wanting to carry out this terrible act. So even though that's one thing, there's obviously a whole bunch of issues that was going on in this woman's life that have yet to come to light. As irritating and upset as I've gotten at YouTube in the past, this is this is a horrible thing to have gone through. And my heart goes out mm-hmm. to all of the YouTube employees who are dealing with it. Yeah, I just want to say uh, many thanks to the law enforcement that did an absolutely wonderful job safeguarding 1,700 people, the 1,700 people that work at YouTube, and for making sure that they got the appropriate medical attention to the four people that were injured. I just want to, I actually do want to call out two, th- two things that, uh, in terms of the reaction, I felt were particularly unpleasant to witness. The first is people who are against the National Rifle Association, who seem to be making oh, hay yeah. about a tweet about the National Rifle Association saying that people should rise up against the censorship at YouTube. <clears throat> There's no indication that this woman was a member of the National Rifle Association, and I think it's supremely unfair to try to implicate any kind of responsibility to that association based on rising a tweet which said rise up against censorship it indicated nothing violent at all and Mm -hmm. i i I really wanted to call out that particular threat narrative and the other one is these uh trans exclusionary radical feminists have come out and started to talk or speculate that the shooter is a, a male to female trans woman and I mean, some of the tweets, if this shooter is a male to female, I'm going to become a trans re- exclusionary radical feminist. Trans, quote unquote, women have muscled out bio females from their spaces and accomplishments two tiny times already. They say the shooter is female. Women would never do such a thing. You can guarantee they're not actually male and just another T.I.M., which I presume is some kind of slur on trans women. Uh, trans... Man, trans imitating something probably trans trans yeah. imitating women and what world do you have to live in how sheltered are you where you think that women can't be violent well that's uh, that's one thing it's well it's a, it's a dedication to a vision of women not being moral agents to the same degree women mm. men are uh personally i think that regarding women i think that not regarding women as having the full scope of human morality is more of the insult than accepting that they do and that they can be evil. Because if you can't accept that women can be evil, you can't accept that they can choose to be good. I I believe women are equal to me. I believe that was what I was supposed to be believing all along, right, feminists? 
I mean, it's all about equality, yeah, right? Yeah, in this case, these Anyways, are trans-exclusionary <laughs> radical feminists. So they're, uh, you can say that there's, yeah, a, there's but, a distinction there between just the run-of-the-mill feminist, but yeah. The extreme of the extreme. Yeah, the extreme of the extreme. Oh, goodness. But yeah, so those are the two things that I wanted to call out because it seems to be the, to me, in my mind, they're the most egregious reactions to this. To presume yeah. that this individual was trans based on what I, I believe is no evidence um, and also to presume that the N National Rifle Association has to take responsibility for a tweet, which was obviously about rising up against censorship, which doesn't mean go to YouTube headquarters and with a gun and hurt people, shoot people. So I just wanted to call yeah. out those two. And I also want to monitor yeah. this to see if this ends up being memory hold because the, it was a woman. Oh, trust me. We will be monitoring this here at Honey Badger Radio for that exact reason. And just, yeah, unfortunately, there is more examples of people trying to politicize this. Like even before we started recording, I watched a video by a journalist named Tim Poole, uh, who I'm sure a lot of you know. And he cited a couple of examples of people that were making tweets about the situation before information came out. There was one person that said, oh, God, I hope it's a white male so I can politicize politicize the hell out of this or and there and there was another tweet it's of uh, somebody saying i'm going to politicize the hell out of this uh take let's take down the nra something like that please guys just for just for at least 48 hours can you just keep your political agendas to yourself and then let's have a proper discussion about this and hopefully to your point allison this conversation will continue especially among those that happen to be anti-gun and don't just forget it because it is a woman or it doesn't suit a particular narrative anyways ladies and gentlemen that'll do it for us here for this edition of breaking badger news i won't be plugging anything just out of respect for the victims and the whole situation but i i ask that if you want to get more information on this in the coming days as i'm sure there will be please stay tuned to honey badger radio thanks so much have a good day